Have you ever had hard-coded version numbers in your Golang software or other configurations that you pass in when you build your software? I have. I have many times seen the version being a variable that the developers kinda just append or up when they commit their um, changes to git and this is a solution and it works I've used it myself multiple times but it's error prone it's easy to forget to change this variable and also it's very hard to maintain if you're more developers passing and merging many requests and finally I have found a great solution and that solution is that we can actually modify variable values at build time using the go build command and this allows us to change the continuous deployment so that when we build our Golang binary we can actually pass in values to the binary such as version number, runner ID, client ID, whatever you want and this is great because now I can easily automate stuff like okay this binary is going to this client it should have this ID this invocation ID client ID whatever and the way you would do this is that we can actually pass options from the go build command into the linker if you're not familiar with a linker, it's the component inside the go build command responsible to assemble your code into a binary. And we can pass information to this linker by using something called the LD flags. And we can pass values to the LD flags that are later passed to the linker. So to do this, we will start a fresh Golang module which will contain a very simple main file that prints information about the client and the current version which will be contained in a few variables. So we can actually go ahead and I have a new folder here so I will do go mod in it to create my module and it's programming proceed dot tech slash build flags and you will also need a main file for this and we need to update the main file with a main package and we also need the main function and what we want to do is we want to print values of a few known variables so let's go ahead and first create the variables so we will do it up here and we will have the version which will be 0.0.1 .0 and we will also have something we call runner which is the ID for the current deployment and it will be client dash 1.0.0 this is just examples so you will get to know how we can manipulate these values so let's simply make our binary log the, these values. So we are logged at print line, starting runner, and we will print the runner name, and we will print version, and the value of version. And now that we have this, we can actually go ahead and take a look at the LD flags. So you can view and the build command options you have by doing go build and then you pass in the ld flags by doing dash dash ld flags equals dash dash help the syntax may look a little bit weird but this is actually pretty logical if, if you think about it because the first dash dash parameter that we pass in goes to the go build command and the input dash dash help is the input parameter that it passes to the linker so this is the reason why it looks like this and if you go ahead and take a look you can see there's a 
bunch of things that you can do a lot of memory profiling and profiling benchmarkings the thing we are interested in is this dash capital X and you can see the definition that add string value definition of the form input path dot name equals value so import path will be the module name that you use to import the package and then dot name is the variable name and then equals the value also note that this says string value so now we know that we can pass in values using the dash x option so we can actually go ahead and try this out just to get a feel for how to use it but let, let's first build and run the binary to see what happens so we can do go build and we will build the main file and we will also execute it and now you can see the output starting runner client da -da -da, version 0 0.0.1 great let's rebuild it by this but this time we will use the ld flags so the way you do it is that you specify go build and the output the o flag by the way is the output file name which will be main and we can do ld flags remember we are passing the dash x flag into the linker so you don't pass you don't do it like dash x here in the go build command because these are the ld flags these flags are going to the linker so dash x and then you need a single quote because this is the string value that we're doing now and we are going to the main package so let's type main dot variable no the variable name so it's runner let's change the runner and we will say that this is client 2.0.0 instead and if we go ahead and build that and execute the main file now you can see that the client version has actually changed we changed the value during the build time of the binary so that is awesome and you can change multiple values so you can actually add more x flags here we can add a second one and we will do the main version and it will be also up one version and we rebuild and we re-execute and we will see that it updated both values so that is very handy if you want to update variables at runtime now you can do sub packages as well you're not constricted to the main package so you can easily try this by creating a new folder i will create a folder called version and inside version i will have a file called version.go the naming convention here is not the best but the reason we have this package is because it will contain the version information so remove the version variable from the main package and we put it inside of this one and we make it a capital V because we want to expose this variable to other packages so we have a single version package it contains the value of our version and we can go ahead and change the output here as well because we will now do version dash version from our sub module and you see here the import path is the module name and then the package version and this is important because if you remember the definition of the x flag it said to use the import package path so we need to use this full path to alter the value of the sub package 
and we can go ahead and use this so let's rebuild again but this time we will only modify the value of the version and that is found inside the full path dot version because that's the name of the variable and we will change the value to let's make it 0.3 just to spice things up a little so if we go ahead and run this now and then execute main we should now see that the version is changed so it's important to remember that you need to use the full path of the package and to really get something out of this you kind of want to or you probably want to add git versions because that's very handy when you need to update the version names and the way you can do that very easily is that you can add let's start up a git repo in here so we can actually get something out of it so if you do git init and we add the files that we currently have uh, I kinda added the binary as well but this is just an example so let's do the test commit and we can see everything is added now you can run git rev parse dash dash short and head capital and you will get this tiny string which is the version short version of your commit cha. let's say we want to inject this during build time you can do that by passing this git rev parse command into the ld flags as well and this is what you normally would do in the pipeline to automatically add the commit cha. so let's go ahead and do git build and again ld flags and we will say the x flag and again we need to make the full path and we're setting the version equals to now you can break out of, out of this command by doing the dollar sign and inside the dollar signs you can do brackets and you can put your linux command inside of this so let's put the git rev parse dash dash short and head in here now when this executes it will first execute the git rev parse command take the value from that into our version so let's build that and now that we have built it we can execute main again and we will see the version is now the git sha perfect we have an automatically updated version which we can put in our CECD um, so the examples I've used in this video is very simple you can of course use this to multiple things one thing you shouldn't use it for is secrets secrets should never be stored in your binary that way uh, so try to avoid that um, mm, I have seen this being used for versions which we have done here I have also seen it being used as feature flags to disable certain like you have a maybe you have something that some clients versions shouldn't do because they haven't paid for it and you can disable that using a feature flag which your pipeline then ingests through the LD flags and this is very handy at least it was for me and I hope it will be for you as well so if you're using LD flags in any way I would love to hear about it and love to see how you use them and why you use them and kind of get more information about how people are leveraging them and for what because it's always interesting to find out and I hope you like this video if you did like and subscribe and I will keep making videos